Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you to this Sunday morning Sunday school lesson. Uh, I had an opportunity to share with you a few weeks ago on, a, on something kind of, as I mentioned before, I kind of vary away sometimes from uh, quarterly material uh, when I feel like I'm led to do something else. And the interesting thing is uh, since we've not been able to gather up here at the church publicly, uh, if you've noticed, and uh, I'm sure some of you have, your quarterly material ran out the end of May. So, uh, haven't had the opportunity until now to get up here and pick up new uh, quarterly material. So, I'm winging it and I'm going with something a little bit different today and I hope you'll follow with me as, as we go. Uh, I first want to say uh, I thank you for tuning in, uh, watching Sunday School Lessons online. Uh, I think it's gone really well along with the worship service, Wednesday services, and all the activities that, that's been uh, uh, recorded online. And I personally want to thank Don McLaurin uh, for all the efforts that he makes to come up here and coordinate all this and get everything uh, taped so that uh, our church folks at home that uh, are not still not getting out and social distancing uh, away from church are able to enjoy the services uh, just as if we would be here. The only difference is that I can't see you by face. I miss my hugs and I miss the greetings that I get when I'm here. So uh, I just want to throw that out there and thank Don and uh, all those that are involved in putting all this kind of stuff together so that we can enjoy our time together at least on air. Uh, before we get started this morning, I want to lead us in a word of prayer and uh, I want us to think about those in our church family. Uh, there's been some loss in our community. Uh, there's those that are anticipating surgery or, or uh, recuperating, uh, and there's just a, lonely, a lot of lonely people, I think, out there who miss the fellowship of being with other people. So bow with me just a minute as I lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this morning, uh, that we're able to gather together uh, by video uh, and share, at least in a few words, that Maybe the Lord will touch our hearts and uh, encourage us just a little bit in this time of uh, pandemic, this time of unsettledness in our country, that, Lord, uh, we would lift you up, that everything that we do and say would be uh, pleasing to you. We think, of uh, Lord, this morning of those in on, on our minds uh, that are in need of prayer, not that we don't, all don't need it, but, Lord, that uh, we think about others that... Uh, or maybe lonely, those, Lord, who are experiencing health problems or maybe a death in the family, Lord, we just lift them up to you in a mighty way and ask that you reach out and let them know that you are the Lord of lords uh, and that you are the King of kings and, Lord, that you are always with them until the end of time. So today, Lord, uh, continue to bless each one uh, that listens to this Sunday school lesson this morning. Lord, be with me as I try to lead in something that's uh, a little bit far off maybe from what we're accustomed to doing. But Lord, just give me the strength and the power to deliver something that someone will get something out of. And I ask you in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, again, like I said, it's, it's good to be with you. Uh, last time I taught you, I, I gave you a lesson on fear, if any of you remember that. Uh, hope I didn't scare you to death in that, and I, and I don't think I did. And I appreciate all the comments that I've gotten or, and the calls that I received from you thanking me for the Sunday School lesson. It's not me. It's the good Lord that gives us the words to say, so we, we give Him the glory. This morning I want to talk to you about something. Uh, as I said, we don't have traditional quarterly material yet, but uh, I want to talk to you about something that, uh, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to forget about, and that is the Bible. Uh, so my lesson today is on the Bible. What is the Bible? Uh, I'm going to give you some Bible facts. So if you see me look down, I, I have notes. I have some printouts. I have some things, even as I look this topic up and, and did some exploring, uh, some things that, that as a longtime Christian, as a reader of the Scriptures, as a Sunday school teacher, whatever capacity that I serve in, there's, there's some things about the Bible that I found out that I didn't know. And so I want to share hopefully some of those with you this morning and, uh, and, and hope that you'll take the time. And, and this is the important thing. I may be getting a little bit ahead of myself at the end of what I'm going to say, but encourage you to take your Bibles 
every day is real. Now, one of the things that we found ourselves in this pandemic doing is we can't go anywhere. Uh, you know, we kind of feel boxed in, and this has been going on since March, and this is the first Sunday in June. So it's been a long time since we've been able to get out. The governor has loosened some of the standards, which allows us to, to uh, roam a little more freely than what we were doing. Uh, we did have essential places that we had to go, grocery stores, maybe doctor's appointments, uh, certain places that we just had to go. But most of the time we have found ourselves at home. You can't watch but so much TV. Uh, you can't watch, I, I told somebody at work the other day that uh, Claudia and I have worked about all our life. We're just not generally used to stay at home with each other 24 hours a day. So. So we look for other alternatives. I have never been a person, uh, a big reader. Uh, I will pick up something that the title interests me and read it, or an article, uh, a magazine, uh, a handyman book, things like that to catch my interest. But I do read the Bible. Uh, maybe not as often as I should, maybe not as long as I should, but I do read the Bible because it's a very important vital part of our life. So I want to start out this morning by asking you uh, and, and looking at the question, talking about the Word of God, which is the Bible, and the Word of God is powerful. And I'll give you some examples of that uh, in just a minute. Uh, I want to start out by reading some scripture texts. The first will be 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. And then after I read that, if you'll go over to the second chapter of 1 Peter, verses 1 through 3. So follow along in your Bible or just listen as I read you these particular verses and then I'll have, I've got some comments to make about, uh, about what's being said in the Scriptures. In 1 Peter 1, 22-25, it says this, Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of, it, but of imperishable, though the living and enduring, or through the living and enduring Word of God. For all people are like grass, and all the glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the Word that was preached to you. And then over in Second Peter, uh, oh, excuse me, First Peter, Chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, says this, Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have trust, or tasted that the Lord is good. And I'm sorry I'm fumbling over a few words. I've got too many papers up here. Excuse me, I'll put this one out of the way. Now, I want us to think about the Bible this morning. Uh, everybody that I know of has one. Uh, if you're like us in our house, I have a couple of, well, I think I actually have three. I think Claudia has a couple. Jane has a Bible. We usually have a family Bible uh, around somewhere. But most homes that I know of have a Bible. Now, my question to you this morning is, is that, uh, and this is one that my wife gave me back in 2003, it's the New International Version, and I about wore the cover off of it, but uh, I want to ask you about your Bible. Is your Bible an object that you have sitting on the end table, or your nightstand, or you got it down on the bottom shelf somewhere and it's not being used? Is it something just collecting dust, or is it something that you use? Well, I hope you find yourself using it, uh, because it's very important and it's very uh, essential. We hear that word used right now during the pandemic that, that we do go to, go to essential places. We have to do essential things. And I can honestly tell you that the Bible is one of those essential things that you need, that you have to have. So the Bible is neither, uh, when you look at it, the Bible is neither a charm nor an idol. Okay? The Bible was not given to us to worship, but to obey, that we may grow thereby. Uh, uh, in 
1 Peter, uh, it talks a little bit about that. Now here's the questions I have for you. As you look at your Bible and hopefully as you read your Bible, have you grown in your faith? Have you grown in your knowledge by reading the Bible? Uh, are you strong spiritually because of what the Bible instructs you to do? Is your soul being filled with the fullness of God? Are we, we, are you, are we walking, uh, you know, I mean, excuse me, are we getting to know God better by, by studying the scriptures? Uh, are we finding more commands and promises and walking in them as we study the scriptures? Now, if, if you can answer any of those questions or in your mind's eye as I've given them to you, think about those. Uh, the Bible, when you think of the Bible, the Bible will open these ways to us. It is food for the soul. I just read that in, in what uh, uh, Peter had to say. It is food for the soul. It's milk for the young and it's meat for the maturing adult or the maturing Christian. It's substance. It's what our bodies have to have spiritually in order to, to, to uh, uh, I'm not going to say survive, but in order to understand what life is all about. One of the things that I've heard people say at work, one of the things I've probably even said myself, is that when this pandemic thing kind of eases up a little bit, a lot of people have said one of the first things they were going to do was, was what? Go out to a restaurant and get a good meal. Uh, we're, we're tired of, believe it or not, we're tired of home cooking or sandwiches or fast food drive throughs or whatever it may be, and we want to just go out into a good environment somewhere and sit down and feed our physical body. What about feeding our spiritual soul? That's what the Bible does. It feeds our spiritual soul. Well, here's my question, or, or at least a question. When you think about it, what is the Bible? What is the Bible? Well, some people call it the writing of men. Because after all, who wrote it? We know that Peter wrote some. Uh, we have words in there from Paul. We have different writers, uh, depending on Old Testament or New Testament, where you're at. But, but some call it writing of men. Some say it grew from the experiences of men as they lived and they learned, just like uh, us. Uh, I found, uh, you know, talking to Don a little bit earlier, and uh, the older I've gotten, the more I know, or should know, I should have gained more knowledge, I should have gained more wisdom as I had grown older. And so uh, the experience of men, as we have progressed through, through life, uh, what we learn uh, and how we live, have we grown in that? Well, that's what the Bible is. Uh, if, that, if, if, that, if, if, if it was written by men and was the writings of men, uh, then it would be uh, uh, faulty because all men are faulty. It would have error. It would have uh, untruths. It would have things in there that, that just aren't so. Uh, it would have to be revised frequently. Uh, it, like, like school textbooks are revised. Uh, when new knowledge is gained, we have to revise things. So uh, it's, it, But the Bible we find is always up to date. It is as modern as the day it was written. Uh, it always suits our present needs, and we need to understand that and draw from that. Now, here's, I'll ask you again, what is the Bible? Well, here in the scriptures that I read, and there's other uh, scriptures that will verify and back this up, some in Jeremiah, Luke, Psalms, 1 Peter, John. Uh, we can go through a whole bunch of, of books of the Bible and read particular verses concerning uh, God's Word. But what is the Bible? Well, here it's called the Word of God and the truth through the Spirit. Now, in 1 Peter uh Chapter 1, I read you verses 22 through 25. In 23 through 25, just backing up a little bit, God's Word, according to what is written in 1 Peter, uh, God's Word is an incorruptible seed. It can never die. It never wears out. It never becomes out of date. Uh, 
I can assure you that uh, I accepted Christ at the age of nine years old here at First Baptist Church. Uh, I remember the day that I walked down uh, with my twin sister. Uh, we, we, I don't know, uh, I think God touched us both that day and said one can't go without the other. So we both came down and I was baptized at the age of nine by Reverend George uh, Simmons. And some of you remember uh, uh, Pastor Simmons. And ever since that day, uh, my life should have changed. Did it? I think it did. Uh, even at the age of nine, I didn't understand the Bible. I didn't understand Christianity. But something tugged at my heart that day that told me that I needed to come down and profess Christ as my Savior and give my life uh, to God. And so that's what I did. But I really didn't start growing in the knowledge of the Bible and, uh, and the Scriptures and trying to understand what it was telling me until probably my late teens, uh, early 20s. Uh, I started teaching Sunday school. Uh, I was trying to figure this up the other week. The best of my knowledge, I've been teaching uh, almost 47 years. Uh, I took over the class downstairs after uh, Roger Clark left. And so I've been teaching that class and hopefully not only teaching it, but learning a lot as I go along. And it's always been based on reading the scriptures, studying a Sunday school lesson, and doing follow-up, maybe through a commentary or just general search of what is that scripture trying to tell me. And I have found, like so many of you, that, that what it tells me is different today than it might be next week. It depends on the circumstances in our life, what we're going through, uh, how God reacts to our needs according to what the scriptures will tell us. And so it's a very interesting book. And so that's the reason I tell you that the Bible is, is not outdated. It's very modern. It never wears out. It never uh, becomes out of date. And it never has to be revised. Uh, even though we have different uh, uh, New uh, King James Version, New International Bible, whatever. We had different interpretations, but the words never change. The, the meaning never changes. Now, uh, as we look at the Bible, I want to give you uh, <laughs> just a, I want to give you some facts uh, that I have found as I've looked up uh, and, and see if you know some of these facts that are in the Bible because it's a very knowledgeable book. Uh, yep, yeah, we read it for scripture text and we read it reverently, uh, but the Bible covers every aspect of our life from beginning to the end. Every situation we find ourselves in, the Bible covers. Listen to some of these Bible facts because it, it's, it contains a lot of interesting things. It's an interesting book if you'll take the time to start reading it or at least get into it a little bit deeper. Here are just a few facts. The Bible prophesied or prophesied about people turning from God's Word in the end times. Uh, I've worried a little bit about that. I say worried. I don't guess I've worried. I've thought about that. The older I get, each day that I live, I'm closer to the end of time. And you are too. But listen to this. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 says this. The time will come when people will not listen to the truth. They will look for teachers who will tell them only what they want to hear. They will not listen to the truth. Instead, they will listen to stories made up by men. That's a fact. Here's another one. Scripture says, I'm not trying to scare you that we're living in the last days, but I've told my Sunday school class many a times, I said, we, we are. Every day we live, we're, li we're living in the last days because we're getting closer and closer to that second coming of Jesus Christ. Scripture says in the last days, many people will think gain is godliness. This couldn't be truer today with this prosperity movement going on. In 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, verse 4 through 6, it talks about people, they are conceited, they understand nothing, they have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth 
and who think that godliness is a mean to financial gain, but godliness with, commit, with contentment is great gain. Titus, the first chapter, verse 10 and 11. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumstances for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth from, uh, by their false teachings, and they do it only for money. And then lastly, 2 Peter 2, verse 1 through 3, and I think I read those. That was some of my opening scripture that I read to you. There are false prophets among people. There are false prophets among people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow uh, their ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with... Uh, words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. False teachers. It's talked about in Peter. It's talked about here. Now, just a couple of other things I want you to know about the Bible. And if you, if you go in and look up, you can Google search it. That's what I did with some of it. I'll be honest with you. But uh, there's so many facts about the Bible that, that I didn't know uh, and perhaps you didn't know. The, the Bible tells us, uh, well, let me just let me throw these out. I won't read all the scripture text because we don't have time to do that. Did you know that there is a do not fear verse? And I talked to you about fear, I think, I may be wrong, I didn't write it down, I think maybe three weeks ago or either four weeks ago in the Sunday school lesson I talked to you about fear. There is uh, a do not fear verse in the Bible for every day of the year. Can you believe that? 365 days in a year and there's a do not fear verse in the Bible that will cover every day of the year. Uh, so look it up. Uh, look for some of them. The Bible indicates that the earth is round. I had a brother-in-law. Uh, he's passed away uh, a good number of years ago. I had a brother-in-law one time that stood me down that the earth was flat. And I said, you know, I don't know, you're wrong. You know, we, we study that stuff in school. Earth's not flat. And he said, yes, it is, because the Bible strictly talks about the four corners of the earth. And it does. It says that. But listen to this. In Isaiah 40, uh, verse 21, 22, uh, do, it says this. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? It sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Proverbs 8.27, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep. And then Job 26.10, he has inscribed a circle on the surface of the waters at the boundary of light and darkness. The Bible indicates here that the earth is round. Now, you say, well, that really doesn't mean anything to me. It does because it's truth. The Bible is truth. The Bible says the earth is suspended in space. I just told you that. God's Word says that the earth uh, would wear out. Listen to what it says in Psalms 102, verse 25 and 26. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing. You will change them, and they will be discarded. Everything we wear out, the earth's going to wear out. Here's some fun facts I bet you didn't know. Did you know that about uh, 50 Bibles are sold every minute? Is that not amazing? 50 Bibles are sold every minute. Did you know that the book of Esther is the only book in the Bible that does not mention God's name? Ah, might have caught you off guard a little bit. I, I may be throwing some things out there that you thought you knew that you realized that you don't. Did you know that there is a Bible at the University of Göttingen, Germany? 
that is written on 2,470 palm leaves. Bet you didn't know that. Uh, interesting. This book is very interesting if we'll take the time to read it. How about the history of the Bible? The Bible was written over 15 centuries ago. The New Testament, how many of you know uh, what the uh, New Testament was originally written in? It was written in Greek. How about the Old Testament? Written in Hebrew. The Bible has over 40 authors, 40 contributing people who penned the scriptures that we have in the Bible. It gives us, the Bible gives us facts about Jesus. Uh, Jesus claimed to be God. Uh, John 10, 30 through 33. I won't take time to read all of that, but you can go back and look that up as reference. Uh, it talks about Jesus claims to be God. Uh, he is the creator of all. Jesus preached. Did you know that Jesus preached on hell more than anyone in the Bible? I bet you didn't know, realize that either. I didn't. Some of these facts I didn't realize either. Matthew 5, 29, 30 says this. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for you to lose your whole body and to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off, throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. That's in the scriptures. Uh, let's look at the books of the Bible. You know, I, we, we've been going through in our Sunday school class for I don't know how many years now. It's a good number of years. We are, we are actually going through each quarter uh, a book of the Bible. And sometimes we go through two books because they may be short books. But we, uh, we spend a whole quarter on one book of the Bible. There are 66 books in the Bible. The Old Testament, how many does the Old Testament have? Some of you know that. Has 39. How about the New Testament? 27. 27 books in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there are 17 prophetic books. Let me tell you what they are. Lamentations, Jeremiah, Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Zephaniah, Haggai, Amos, Zechariah, Micah, Obadiah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Jonah, Malachi, and Joel. Okay, I'm going to give you a test on this next time I see you. So y'all write all this stuff down. Uh, let's talk about the verses in the Bible. I said it has 66 books in the Bible. How many verses in the Bible? How many of you know that? The Bible in all has 31,173 verses. 23,214 of those are found in the Old Testament. The, the rest, which is 7,959, or the New Testament. Any of you know the longest verse in the Bible? It is Esther chapter 8 verse 9. Do you know the shortest verse in the Bible? That's John 11 verse 35. Uh, here's an interesting fact that I didn't know. It just blew my mind when I looked this up and found it and, and read it. Even though you can get the Bible for free there are organizations out there that will give you a Bible. Our church, if you need a Bible, will supply you with a Bible. Gideon's place Bibles. American Bible Society places Bibles. You can get a free copy of the Bible, but here's something that I bet you didn't know. The Bible is the world's most shoplifted book. The most shoplifted book. The Bible has sold more copies than any other book in history. Is that not amazing? Now, here's some predictions. The Bible talks gives us predictions. There are over 2,000 prophecies in the Bible that have already been fulfilled. 2,000. Even though there's only 2,500 prophecies in the Bible, 2,000 of those have already been fulfilled. Did you know that the Bible talks about all kinds of things? It talks about dinosaurs. That's over in Job. Chapter 40, read a little bit about that. It goes over to Genesis and talks about the creatures of the sea. Uh, it talks about a lot of things. And then here's, here's a, the last fact that I'm going to share with you other than just a couple that I have over here. Do you know the very last words in the Bible? 
I, I bet you can tell me the first words in the Bible. What were the first words in the Bible? In the beginning. All right, the last words of the Bible come from Revelation 22, verses 18 through 21. It says this, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. The Bible covers from the beginning to the end. We understand that. There's a lot of unread material in that Bible. We sometimes have a tendency to, uh, we have favorite scripture. I have some in my Bible. I've got some highlighted, some underlined, some written in margins, uh, that kind of thing that's important to me. And so we all have favorite scripture. But the thing is, is we need to read all scripture. We need to read the whole Word of God. Even though there's some things in there we don't want to hear. Uh, some startling things. But we need to read it. Because it's God's Word that's been penned to be passed along to generation to generation. A couple more facts before I close. Did you know that more women, more women than men read the Bible? I, I, can, I, I can find that to be true. I can. Uh, I really can. According to a 2017 study, and I know we're in 2020, so this study's not that far back, but according to 2017 study, women are 20% more likely to read the book, to read the Bible, the holy book, than men. There are 185 songs in the Bible. Most of them come from Psalms. I'm sure you're aware of that. The Old Testament took 20 times longer to write than the New Testament. And the last word in the Bible is what? Amen or Amen, whichever way you pronounce it. I'll finish with this because I think it's very important uh, as we, as we kind of close this, this Sunday school lesson on the Bible. And we could talk about the Bible for a long, long time. But here the Bible was not given us was not given to us to worship, but to obey. Its power is not in the book, but in the words of the book. The book is uh, the book is but paper and ink. Uh, the words that's in the book are spirit and life. All should fear. We should all fear if we dishonor the statements in the Bible and its word. The Bible is a path to God. It is a pattern, just like we would have a pattern for building a house that will not fall. To know the Bible uh, is the same way. It's, an, it's a book of instructions, and that's what I tell my Sunday school class a lot. The Bible is a book of instructions. To come to know the God of the Bible is to live. The Bible has power. And I'll close with this statement. What really matters is what happens in us, not to us. So I encourage you as you, as you are, are sitting at home, with, like most people are, you're bored, you don't have anything to do, you want something good to read, not a, it doesn't have to be a romance book, a handyman book, or whatever like that. Take this right here. Take this right here, and if you do not have a yearly plan of going through the Bible, there's plenty of them out there, or you can develop your own. You can start reading the Bible, and I encourage you to make an effort in the next year. Even though this is the, the uh, 7th of, of June, I encourage you, you can, you can read it now from June to June of next year, but see, make, make a conscious effort in the next year to see if you can't read all the way through this. Will you understand it all? No. I don't understand it all at my age. But every time I pick it up and read it, I get something different out of it. 
It's the most publicized book in the world. It's the most shoplifted book in the world. But it's also the most precious book in the world. Use it. God bless you.